I'm gonna go ahead and show you where I get these limestones. I got an entire bag right here. This is what I'm using in my limelight reactors. There's many uses. I'm gonna show you where I get it right here. These were purchased off of eBay. There's the seller. So they're very inexpensive. If you want to learn a little bit about them, go to Wikipedia. And you can learn about calcium oxide. But be careful, remember who owns Wikipedia. So the information you get off there, you know, you gotta take it as a grain of salt. Because remember, Stanley Myers, who's the water fuel cell inventor, and he'll probably be remembered as the guy that saved the planet. But the problem is, you know, they label him as a fraud. And we all know that's not true. So, I don't know, just something I'd point out on there about Wikipedia. You know, they put Stanley Myers fuel cells on here. We all know that it works. Also wanted to throw this in there. I want to talk about calcium real quick. This is another magnificent element right here on the table of elements. Its atomic number is 20. Take a look at it here in the book so you can go back and read it. See the Egyptians heated limestone to make plaster. Okay, so they were able to use this in dry climates. So they made calcium sulfate and it forms gypsum. So this piece of plaster, it's very hard. So ancient peoples knew. Okay, the Egyptians heated limestone to prepare lime for use in buildings in dry climates. And it's also a part of your body, it's the most main element, calcium. You know, your teeth, your entire shell is made of this element. So if you're going to go ahead and build the Pulsar reactor, it's depending on what you use inside. Like if you're going to use the platinum palladium catalyst on normal rock, other stones, depending on what you use gives you a totally different reaction. The limestones are going to give you an original limelight reaction. Let me show you how this works here. If you go ahead and point this at the platinum palladium catalyst, you've seen that. You've seen how that reacts. It's very bright incredibly bright. If you point at the limestone you're gonna get the same reaction but you're not even gonna be able to scratch this thing with this flame. This flame can't even scratch this limestone. Let me show you. So you can get this huge candle luminescent reaction from it. Oh, sorry. and it doesn't even scratch the rock. So it's something to think about when you build your pulsar reactor. And if you take a look here, look on my electromagnetic radiation spectrum poster. And if you go outside and look up at the sky, it's not just some fancy backdrop. Okay, the light affects you physically. You guys need to know that. You know, UVA, UVB, UVC. You know, all these energies coming from the sun. Some of this stuff's harmful and some of it's beneficial to humans. You know, it protects your skin, giving you vitamin D. 
it's just something to think about. You know, the sun is very important. I've been working with light for a very long time. There's just some important things to understand about limestones and calcium oxide. So I've got my voltage meter here and I'm in the Celsius range on the temperature gauge. And what we're going to do is I'm going to slake this lime. I don't know if you've ever done this, but you just put some ordinary distilled water onto your not hydrated lime and you're going to hydrate it. And what's going to happen is it's going to increase in temperature. It's going to go into an exothermic reaction. It's very intense. It can be. So I've got the water on there. See, at 23, 24, here we go. We add a little more. Uh oh. May have overdone it. You can see the reaction taking place. Oops, sorry about the camera. As you can see, it's a very powerful reaction. And the heat coming off of there, I can feel it all the way over here. Let's see if I can get this on there. So it's a very, very hot reaction, a very strong reaction. Once you put water on this stuff, the temperature really gets going. So I thought I would throw this in there. Here's another great element. This is sulfur, number 16 on the table of elements. And this is related to calcium oxide and limestone. You have to go back and read this. So it was a component in Greek fire. They used sulfur, calcium oxide, and potassium nitrate. So it was used in ancient Greek times as a weapon. Thought I'd just throw that in there so you guys could see that. Sulfur. So did you know that those eight-sided pyramids that are over in Egypt that are shaped like water molecules, okay? They're tetrahedrons, and they're shaped like water molecules at the atomic level. So they just happen to be right next to the Euphrates and the Nile rivers, you know? Those are two of the largest freshwater river sources on the planet that can be seen from space. And they completely encase those in limestone. They were entirely made entirely from limestone. So the casings wore off over time. If you think about that, they could withstand 5,100 degree blast of oxyhydrogen gas. They could withstand the power of the sun. So they were built to last. Extreme temperatures. It was also the secret to my pulsar reactor. Those of you that keep up with my tech, think about that. So you're going to notice some strange things when working with these limestones. 
a lot of different reactions you can do with it. And remember, the pyramids were encased in these limestone. And I always noted something, noticed something about this. I want to show you. Look here. This is Barbara Hand Clo. This is a really good book, Alchemy of Nine Dimensions. I've read this a couple times. It's really good. But if you notice something here, look how on the pyramids, even in the books, and on the back of the dollar bill, look at the light coming off the top there. See the light? If you look at the back of the dollar bill here, and knowing that these things were encased in limestone, and how this works with the oxyhydrogen reaction, see that light in the all-seeing eye? Sorry about that. And I was like, well, I've seen that somewhere else before, a light like that. There you go. It looks just like that when you look at the pulsar reactor. It's very similar. All right, just for fun, let's see what it would look like. So this stone right here has metaphysical properties. It's in the Bible. It's ancient stone written in our history. It's used with alien technology. Go look for yourself. Go on Google and check out limestone. And look at what it symbolizes. Limestone is assisting in stone used in the healing properties to encourage purification. Reminds of us of our innocence. Grounds and centers us and entices positive thoughts. So it does affect you physically and metaphysically. I tried to show you guys that. It's incredible if you go and look and read some of the history about this simple stone and how it's changed everything on the planet. In construction, building, and in my life personally. Show you how this works. So we're pulling electrical power directly from the pulsar. You can see the electricity coming in here on the voltage meter. An endless amount of electricity from water. So photon energy comes in from this limestone. Very positive energy, some of the cleanest energy you're ever going to make. Oh, set it around the back here. Let me set it on the other side. And what's great about this, there's no moving parts, ladies and gentlemen. There's no drive shaft, no bearings to wear out. This is how you make electricity. You just recreate the sun. <laughs>